Hey what's up guys, this is Nerds aka Joe, and before we start off the video I'd like to say thank you for the amazing two years it's been, and honestly this should have come out sooner, and I'm mean, gonna I have a video explaining a few things about why it took me so long to make Bridges 100, why it took me so long to make more videos, and things like that, and hopefully I can try and keep up with uploads within the next few weeks. So yeah, this is going to be Bridges 100, and as you guys can see by the title, it's going to be a story, if you will. It'll be a story on the two years I've spent behind the camera and off camera that you guys may not have seen in camera, things like that. The first part of our story starts from August of 2014, and this was like the time I joined Mindplex. According to the forums, I joined in August 2nd, and the first game I played on the server is Turf Wars, and I loved it to death. And then I played games like Sheep Quest, SG, and later on as Bridges. So, I hated Bridges in my first game. I attempted to swim to mid and they didn't go well. There was no revive at that time. However, in my second game, I had a more saltifying, if I can create that word, experience. It was my first experience with Appler. So, I couldn't wrap my head around the concept of why that kid existed. I still can't. And, um, be salty about that. It was like my second game of Bridges and I got melted by apples. When I had worked so hard to get that full iron, it's that feeling when you get full iron, you think, oh, maybe you might win the game, and then it just all comes crashing down. So anyways, however, in my third game and later on in games, I started to play a bit smarter, and I got an I got appreciation for the game. I enjoyed it and had lots of fun with it. So later on in September 2014, my love for the game grew, definitely, and I met two people who helped me really enjoy the game for what it was meant to be. Building a trap one game, and I'm not sure how many times I've told this story. It was a simple slab trap, and my teammate was going to act as a bait. It would work in the way I expected it to. However, I didn't count on the chance that a player would be playing Bomber or any kit that would. And we died. And for whatever reason, I made a Skype call, and I added both of us. And the player that was my teammate was 4chan Mantrain, and the person that blew up our trap was Cyberner Squirrelly and Hurt. And later on, we formed an OB trio and took over Bridges. <laughs> Until we met like a few other players. So, if anything, November came. So, October, I have little <laughs> memory of. I'm not sure what actually really happened in October. Anyways, I made a few new friends, such as Mally and Vanessa, Erno, and a few others like Shaney and the rest of the Kawhi squad. Anyways, I remember the one day I was in a sky base, and sky base is usually a last resort for me, and it always has been. So, right when I'm in the sky base thinking, oh, I might win. Again, rushing defeat comes back, and... I get dropped by a destructor. At the time, I didn't know what what it was. I didn't know what the kit was. I just knew the ground fell, and I wanted it. And it's like that, that feeling you get in more than one game. It's when you get beat by something, you just know you have to go and get it, and go beat others with it. That feeling got when I was first introduced to destructor. So, grinded the crap out of the game, got the kit within two weeks, and I thought I'd make a video about it. If anything, I thought, oh, maybe this could be something I could do, make Bridges videos, because being a YouTuber is something I had thought about, but not really too much. For example, I never thought I would get this far. Anyways, I started out as a normal Skype-based video, and it was on that night, December 23rd, 2014, that I recorded Bridges number one, The Destructor Rises, OP2v1, or... I remember I put a cheesy, cheesy, cheesy description for that video because I felt like that was the most epic feat I had ever gotten in Bridges and the most epic feat I had caught on, like, video. And it was my first Bridges video, so I, of course, I'm like, had to geek it out and get a super cool description for this video. Yeah, it was at a, it was at a time where instructor was actually pretty useful. Which brings me to spring of that year. Or the next year, actually, spring 2015. Originally, in January, there was supposed to be a tournament, but it got canceled because, you know, February 4th, the name changed, all that, and lots of MC servers can keep up with that. So, the meta also began to change. For example, the players were starting to go kits like Brawler, like the more tryhard players, I guess, 
At the time, I think Tryhard was considered like 500 wins, which oh. is ridiculous now because there's people with like 4,000 wins. So I then found something else in Bridges to be salty about because Destructor got a nerf and everyone started using it the way it is, dropping the bridges and all that, stalling games for however long, and it got really, really annoying. And still, it's very, very annoying. Anyways, uh, with Bridges starting to become less diverse, everyone started meaning Brawler. And luckily that little meta ended quick, because I noticed some of the more tryhard players started meaning Berserker, but before this stupid meta that we have in 2016 has to bring this up, I was a Berserker main. So... Yeah, I was a Berserker main before this dumb meta, so either way I'm still part of the meta. Okay, so... It was, which brings me to the summer and fall of that year. Now this was definitely a year that, well, part of the year with me playing this game that really made me play it more. For example, I met players like Ulfur, Crazy, Potato, Kairos, and a few others because in August of the year we'd be forming a Dom team that ultimately, I think we played Dot once and we quit. I think that's literally how it went. I know we literally had one scrim. I think it was against Dot. We got our butts kicked. And we described that summer, and it was like Brawler was still in meta for some for some time actually. And I remember I was actually a Brawler slash was. Berserker main at the time, and I have this epic clip from 40, 44, which was so, so, like, stupid because of how OP the kit was. I thought I was actually, like, skilled, um, hello, but I think I did make hello, a comment hello, at the hello. end. Yeah, I do. I make yes. a comment at the end of the video right, saying, like, yep, go, go, brawler, because if anything in that Cap fight, I was flying, and poor mate craft was what my men. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, and then it came down to September 2018, as I noticed September has been the month. It's been that good month. <laughs> It was like around the end of September, actually. Yeah, it's at the end of September, so beginning of I guess October has some type of meaning. Anyways, in October we thought about making a Bridges team, and a lot of people from the old CCL team, or Champions team, were actually thinking about becoming part of this. For example, they were Champions players, so this was going to be a little bit of a transition for them. However, a good portion of us were also Bridges players, so I'm like, why don't we make a Bridges team for actual Bridges players? The reason we probably hadn't done this before is because this was a time before the BCL. So, it was, if anything, theoretical to make this team because there was nobody to fight against. Because we didn't have all these teams that we, yeah, we don't have that many. Well, we didn't have all these teams that we do. So, with this, I met players like Tanov, uh, regrettably, a Slime, Mike, Cavs, later on Stunner, and I took it upon myself to invite three people of my own. So I invited Nessa, Zinx, and Whittle Doggy, aka Ben. And of the three, only one of them stayed because Zinx, I know Zinx, he said he wanted to play with his friends a bit more because that was just their group, which was a good reason. Nessa just, I don't know, she was in the Skype chat for like two days and then gone the next. Anyways, later on as part of that package, we got Velvet and Corinthia, aka Jen and Cam. And if anything, the team was beginning to thrive around this point. But then again, we come back to the original issue with making a Bridges team. There was no team to play against. So it was like a bunch of Bridges tryhards, but like assembled on a team for what? So one day I was playing with Ben and we found this group of players. They all had the name X Crusader underscore. And I remember we were laughing about it. We were like, holy crap, they're devoted to this. We have to scrim them. So we ended up scrimming Crusader, as was the name of the team. Crusader, which later became Sharpness 5, but we ended up scrimming them and we won the first scrimmage, which was, in some ways, it felt really cool because we we're like, wow, it's our first Bridges scrimmage. It's the first Bridges scrimmage for anything, I think. And it was really something. If anything, we did that entire scrim without kit limits or anything that we have now. And we played on maps like Jungle, so there's like a little bit of spleefing towards the end of that scrimmage there. But it was a lot of fun. First scrimmage. Definitely a fun time to remember. So then we get the beginning of the BCL. So this all started with Duck MC releasing something on his wall about a Bridges League. And instantly, Fuda signed us up because this is what we were looking for, an opportunity to score more teams, and definitely put our skill to the test. As the league was being made, as we gather all these teams and we all got into a Skype chat and all that, we ended up having Dauntless as our first scrim. And so as I mentioned before, this was a team that kicked their butts in champions, and we quit. <laughs> so we already knew this team was going to be formidable. If anything, they had like really good coordination, so we knew, oh, this is a team. This is literally a team that's been playing together for a while. 
and we were like going in there with our best. We're like, well, this is our turf. We're Bridges players. We should win. We just gotta play it smart. So we ended up winning the scrimmage. It was a one round thing, and we kicked out at the end there because we kicked out was the perfect word to use there. We were like intimidated going into that team fight. I remember we had that thought of almost losing. Then Stunner yells, "No, stay! We gotta stay and fight!" And like that was like the call that even won us the game there, which was crazy. And yeah, that's probably the reason why we geeked out because we thought we were gonna lose there for a second, but Stunner made that call. We stayed. We stayed coordinated and we won. So later on, we faced newer teams that year and won well, 2016. And the meta was changing again. If anything, players, like, if anything, kits have been sort of diverse. 2015 was definitely the best year for Bridges, though. But 2016 came and players started going kits like Brawler and Berserker and Appler again. And you were just getting these super annoying games where you'd have a Miner and a Brawler on one team. And you combine those two kits and it's just a monstrosity. Soon after, in July, there was a huge amount of planning going into this. We made a Bridges Competitive League tournament. So with the Bridges Competitive League tournament, it was just... I'm not sure if every league does this, but it was held to where we could decide the tiers and the rankings of like each player. For example, as you guys may see in the doc now, I'll show you guys later, is that... We're putting it tiers and ranks. It's not random. It was discovered from a tournament before. So we ended up winning like most of the rounds there, and we ended up losing the last round to a team called Lenny Face, which was probably by far our most formidable team, as they were probably the most aggressive team that is ever that the BCL has ever seen. And that was just different for us. We were used to being that aggressive team. So when we lost, it was kind of crushing because that was our first loss, and it hurt. It's like. But well, they always do say that failure is that it's good to have some failure and some victory mixed in there because, like I said, the failure was crushing for us because we had never lost before. But they gave us more resolve to try harder. So we ended up winning later on and claiming that tier one rank one spot. And soon after, for like, and soon after, unfortunately, Lenny ended up having to disband, and it just sucked because we're like, oh my gosh, that's our greatest competition. And it's, we still had teams like SV and Limitless to keep us busy, however, and there was a few more teams that were just getting started with BCL that were starting to become decent and really like good and becoming competitive teams that could be formidable against us. Also, within that summer with Lenny, we actually managed to, well, I actually. And also within that summer, we managed to get a YT, which was really crazy for us. If anything, it was a huge milestone and something we really aspired for when the rank officially came out. So to hit that 2000 mark, to hit that crazy mark to where we could be considered a big enough channel to get that rank, it meant something. And I'm something I'm proud of. I'm something that you can be thankful for. It can be thankful to you guys for all the support you guys have provided, even when I haven't been my best with uploads. And if anything, I'm trying to create some better content out there just so you guys can really enjoy it. So also around this time, it was November of 2016 that we created ASOS Black to provide some more competition and some more teams for the BCL. So with ASOS Black, however, we had a system to where we were going to have two of our players lead that and then that team would become its own independent team. However, we ended up having to merge teams because the old ace list was just staggering a little bit because a lot of our players had quit and just gone without a trace. Or they moved on to different games or, yeah, like I said, without a trace. So, ace list became something a little bit different than what it was. For example, a lot of our players started getting into Overwatch. For example, I got into Overwatch. I liked the game a lot. And it's just not the same anymore. Does that mean I'll be quitting soon? No. If anything, it gives me something new to look forward to. No, I'm not quitting the game yet. I don't think I'll be quitting the game very soon. For example, some of you may know, I ended up getting trainee. So I'm trainee and YT. And so if anything, the experience just began to change. And the game itself hasn't really much changed. Now... However, I don't have the same flair I once did two years ago when I started the game. So as you guys may see, it may reflect a little bit in my videos, I don't have the same passion for the game I once did. It is by far my favorite game on Mindplex, my favorite Minecraft game, next to Pot PvP, of course. But 
like I said, it's just I haven't had the same flair for it because it's just not the same. It's like the friends that have gone. It's also like the matter of challenge. For example, it's like I said with that diversity thing, like not the, too many people go different kits. It just becomes berserker bridges. Yeah, it's just everybody's a berserker main now and the games aren't as fun as they used to be. So I'm not going to be quitting the server anytime soon or quitting the game anytime soon. If anything, that's what I think. I think if I end up quitting the server, I'll end up quitting the game. And I'm also trying to find that flare again to where I can, so that I can make better bridges videos. And I know that's what you guys want. You guys want bridges videos. So, do I hate bridges? No. Do I think bridges is boring? No. Do I oftentimes get those boring games where I'm just killing armors? Yes. And it just doesn't sort of reflective in the content. So I've got a few ideas for some new series I can do within bridges, and I've Got some ideas for some potential collabs that I could do. It's where you guys could really enjoy it. Yeah, that's just gonna do it for Bridges number 100. I have you guys to thank for how far we've come. I, I, I spent like four to five days editing it just to find out if the video wouldn't even render. And that was supposed to come out on like Monday or even sometime that weekend. And I've been working on it now to try and fix the export, but now I've completely given up hope and I'm doing this now. I had a cheesy quote in there that I was gonna say within that video that I was editing. Is that, I have created the creation, but you guys have been the foundation of that. You guys have helped me reach goals that I never thought I could achieve within the channel, helped me aspire for things I never aspired for before, and to set new heights for myself too within the channel. Anyways, it has been a cool experience, cool two years. This, is, this isn't this is a quit. This isn't, I'm quitting number 100. No, this isn't 100, I'm leaving. I know many of you got that misconception with that montage gone. But it's just a recap over the past two years and it's just a video I thought I would make so I could sort of explain things behind the scene and how the game has changed for me. Even if it hasn't really much changed, if you've noticed, like a lot of these stories are more so about the people and more so about BCL and things that are just outside the normal game that you typically won't see that much on camera. But yeah, for all good time's sake, we're going to be doing it. The outro, the cheesy outro we've been doing since number one. So this is Nerds, telling you to stay awesome, subscribe, and of course, have a nice game, and thanks for the epic two years.